हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ सर्जन टू लर्न फ्रॉम हिज ओन मिस्टेक्स एज वेल एज वॉट ही ऑब्जर्व इन अदर सर्जरीज सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग फ्यू ऑफ द मिस्टेक्स दैट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व एंड वॉट आई लर्न फ्रॉम द so this is a first case 45 year old patient who is uncooperative not fit for general anesthesia we have sedated the patient and we thought that will be able to carry out the surgery though so first the blade goes in and you will see here even before i could stabilize the globe the patient moves the eye and there is a very big side incision which is created which was not intended so whenever the side incision is used in this case it will leak profusely causing problem in the fluidics of the surgery one option is to suture this and make another incision and complete the surgery i could finish the surgery by lowering the fluidics reducing the vacuum to 50% flow rate to 50% and complete the surgery without any other complication but i learned from this that we must stabilize the globe before taking incision otherwise inadvertently we may make a very large incision and which may have deleterious effect in case number 2 you can see that the surgeon has started with very small capsulexis there the first wave passes nucleus is stab but may be not adequate and then tries to have another hydrodissection wave and watch what happens i am sure you must have observed that the fluid ruptures the posterior capsule there and at the same time you see the pupillary snap sign pupil constricts momentarily and there is deepening of the anterior chamber surgeon didn't notice it during hydro dissection and that's what happened the nucleus is dropping so lessons learned make sure that ccc is of adequate size don't make less than 4 mm capsule rexis because there is always a high chance of anterior capsular block while doing hydro dissection and can cause hydro rupture of the posterior capsule also after the first fluid wave make sure that you tap the nucleus and whatever fluid is accumulated behind comes out the ideal size of rexis for routine case is 4.5 to 5.5 mm you don't want a very small rexis which may have these complications for hard mature cataract pxf retinitis pigmentosa high myopia and pediatric cases it should be more than 5 mm to avoid anterior capsular phimosis for posterior polar cataract we can keep it between 4.5 to 5 mm which improves the ease of optic capture if it is needed in ppc let's move on to case number 3 just watch this case very carefully the surgeon has filled the anterior chamber with viscoat completely no cohesive ovd was placed underneath so there is no other ovd or fluid other than viscoat tear in the anterior chamber and what we are seeing are the lens plumes and what we need to observe is the incision area you can see that it's becoming white tish indicating it's a wound burn so the tip was blocked because of the viscoat low vacuum was used and that's why it could not clear of the viscoat and as the feco energy was delivered the energy stayed around the feco tip causing this wound burn the surgeon was oblivious to this fact now and completed the, the surgery but at the end realized that it's a very severe wound burn you can see the fish mouth thing and uh, had to be sutured there are other ways to tackle this using the tenon patch graft or corneal patch graft but lesson learned here is watch for this sign if there are these lens plumes which are there you must look for the block of the feco tip another sign for blockage of the feco tip is loss of fallibility during the surgery like in this case suddenly the piece is stopped moving towards the feco tip so common causes of blocked feco tip are while doing hard cataract if you use only torsional feco 
and use very low vacuum particularly when the antechamber is filled with viscote or high coat and tip is not cleaned properly or tip is bent how to clean this blocked feco tip you can cover the tip with fluid filled chamber and give longitudinal power burst you can repair or prime the tubing flush the probe and tip with distilled water or change the tip so lens plume and no fallibility you must watch for the signs of tip blockage and avoid complete fill of ac with heavy dispersive ovd in case number 4 we will be tackling a dense or hard mature cataract in a diabetic patient a capsular axis size of 4.6 by 5 mm was made and i was thinking whether it is adequate for this denser cataract or not but i thought it's adequate for this case and i moved on so first made a nice deep trench there and moved on to the chopping maneuvers here and at this point i was unaware that something was happening at this point and you will also notice it now that the entry capsule axis has already given way and now the nucleus is tilting so when did this happen the reason for this was excessive stretching when i was trying to chop so you can see that i was using a shorter chopper there and trying to pull these pieces apart from the anterior edge of this nucleus and that lead to overstretch on the capsular axis margin and it gave way and not just it gave way even the it uh, ran to the posterior capsule and that's why you can see that the nucleus is tilting now and when did i notice this during the surgery when i tried to rotate uh, this uh, nucleus i could see the edge of the nucleus there and you don't uh, usually see the edge of the dense nucleus unless it is a shrunken nucleus or if there is a posterior capsular dehiscence which was the case here so lessons learned use long chopper and go deep for dividing the pieces avoiding overstretch of the capsule case number 5 a plate haptic trifocal aisle being placed in the bag you can watch the cartridge the tip of the injector is right at the center of the bag there and when the trailing haptics are pushed in the bag i realized that the posterior capsule had given way while anti halide was intact aisle was in the bag now what should i do next other eye the patient has already received the same iol and patient was quite happy with that i didn't have a three piece multifocal at this point so i decided that the aisle was uh, quite uh, stable in the bag and just washed off the visco without deepening of the anterior chamber here and this is one month after surgery the patient was doing fine but why did this happen what i should do differently in the next case so when i reviewed this uh, video i realized that it's a plate haptic aisle which is big the injector cartridge was deep inside the bag so it was not giving any space for the iol to unload itself in the bag and it pushed on the posterior capsule posterior capsule was probably separated from the anti hyaloid because of that the posterior capsule was redundant and visco might not be filling the bag completely so it dragged the posterior capsule and caused the tear so fill the bag with ovd completely make sure the bag is deep and completely filled and injector cartridge should be just inside the incision and not into the bag thus giving the iol required space to unfold itself in the bag so do not push the injector too inside the bag and make sure pc is not stretched during the insertion of the iol these are the things i learned from my mistakes thank you